all right what's up guys and welcome back to an update about the dlc this time with the isle of armor and you know the crown of a thundra now the isle of armor is something coming out really soon we're two weeks away for the 17th of june and before that there one big thing happening and that is that the starter pokemon for this generation actually get their hidden ability available their hidden abilities are to be defined as rather rather viable as Cinderace gets libero which is basically protein which allows you to get stab on every move you get in contrast to changing your um, typing for each move you get like say if you have go for high jump kick you are now a fighting type so you get the stab combination but also get the defensive typing or negation of that really boom gets grassy surge so it's now the lesser type of bolo and that's gonna absolutely boost its viability because it's not bad but it's definitely a lot better now clearly and um Inteleon got sniper which in its own right isn't bad it could be very usable for it as it is one of the few pokemon that doesn't um have not have to worry about something with storm gray or water absorb with its sniper shot but of course it all kind of goes without saying that you know it is less exciting between the two sort of freeze but quite frankly very happy to say that and besides that they also have a gimmick move which we're going to cover here which is something to really really think about as the gimmicks moves are allowing them to basically not um, or hit as hard as possible without having to worry about stats and buffs and whatnot which means if somebody go for like a um, geese steel spike to get the, their defense boost it will be neglected through their moves sadly they're all free the same and i want to say that sadly because it means that basically you pick your poison and it's quite obvious that the one with the grassy search is probably the most effective one here i would say but that's only speculation of course but not only did the, the galarian forms got their gmax forms blastoise and venusaur will join in that rank and their gmax moves are pretty much the same as the charizard so max canary to get with the likes of max vine lash are fire spins basically high power fire spins i would call it that basically you know they're not bad um they're always nice every single damage but they're always going to be that definition if you want to use something like that as i think it's been debated before that you know let's say now for charizard for example you you kind of want to set the, um, the draw up to maximize your power output on uh, your next max flare i believe that it's very much the same for both plants as a venusaur as by going for these types of moves they do neglect their um, potential of actually doing something even even hitting harder uh, that said though you know where will this matter more video see than smogon but uh, much like the Glorian form, I think it's unfortunate that there isn't a diversity in the Gmax form because basically, you know, they're copy paste of one another, and you know, I wish for more than that. However, these are of course the lesser of the greater things that was introduced. So let's talk about Galarian Slowbro. So much to no one's surprise, Galarian Slowbro turned out to be psychic and poison. And that's very very cool as you know it does mean that we have a very very unique type in on our hands and um basically we got no more real information besides his signature move his signature move is shell sardom which is basically what necrosma's photon cannon is which basically means that you know your offensive or this that will do or it's poison based <laughs> I'm just gonna have living here. It's poison based and it will do the most amount of damage on the defensive that are the weakest. So basically, maximize its damage output. Now, we don't know whether or not Slowbro is gonna be physical or special, but I could only hope, consider that Slowbro learns Belly Drum, that this generation we're gonna have a physical variant of Slowbro and you're gonna have this type of move together with something like Earthquake and it's gonna be phenomenal. And I'm very excited to see how this guy will do and I really hope we get regenerator on this guy because if we get that then you know we, we are we are striking goal uh, I, I've never been excited about slow bro but I sure as hell am now the mega form back in the day I thought it was fake this guy this guy is something that the poison types have been craving for years and we are finally getting something of value I am very excited about slow bro but I'm also very excited of the other mods to be honest now, your Shifu is something that um, we have to talk about, really, because its synergy moves, uh, both the Wicked Blow, which is dark-based, and the Surgeon Strike, which is water-based, they're both the same move. 
and they're basically as far as i can understand they are storm throw which means that they're 60 base power not necessarily but i can only assume they're 60 base power and will always crit i am very surprised that um, they took this route and made the death tags just about the same i was kind of hoping we would have something different the rapid strike variant would be a multi-hit move while the um, single strike would be um you know a single harder hit we didn't get that and i was kind of feeling considering the way it was introducing your shifu that it kind of as soon as it messed up rather it became mistreated so i got the wrong excitement that said these are still two very interesting pokemon to see and how they will do in this meta as a third water and fighting type is phenomenal and we needed that and as far as a legendary dark and fire type we never had that so We'll see how great this Pokemon really will be, but yeah, weird thing, weird route going with those moves, to be honest. And it turns out the legendary birds are not a combination of their elemental, they are now a trio with three new main stabs with flying type. So there are a cycle, much like before, but a more unique one, I would say, that is a fighting, dark, and psychic. We're gonna start off with the fighting bird with Sapdos. We've got a Howlucha on our hand with a new synergy move in Thunder's Kick, which is basically Fire Lash. That means that this guy can punish a lot of guys. Um, we don't know the stats, of course, but this this could be dangerous Fight, fighting and flying is a phenomenal type combination and it looks to be a pokemon that can really set him a lot of pressure and uh, this is probably what i'm most excited about i didn't think it was gonna be that scary but just by theory this is a pokemon that basically beats wall because of that move I mean, Scallopede is a Pokemon, I would say, or Center Scorch, I mean, is a Pokemon that kind of pressure defensive matchup. This guy is going to be a much, 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 much tougher because fighting is a lot harder to switch into in something like a fire move, so I like this. Now, Galarian Articuno is, um, I shouldn't say the less excited about these three Pokemon, but the Psychic and Flying has been done so many times already that, you know, it is to be expected that maybe, just maybe, it is okay to not be excited about it. But they got a synergy move that is the first of its kind that is able to freeze you. It's a psychic based move that's going to be able to freeze you. It's called Freezing Glare. And um, we never had anything like that. We never had a defined switch ins to potential freezes before like this. Because this means that basically that it can spam move against you and freeze you in other methods besides Ice Beam and that's you know, like i said one of its kind and we know so little about Articuno besides that but that is absolutely something that's going to be annoying for for all the wrong reasons because you know what if it raises 20 percent then it's a very very tough move to be dealing with and Articuno come might be a very very viable mon but until it's out in all of fun drop we don't know but yeah even though i say it's the less exciting one we have so little knowledge and you know um series move like that is well honestly now Galarian Moltres is something that confuses me because the typing I'm all aboard that I think it's amazing to have another dark and flying typing it is not only some unique typing it is a typing that hasn't necessarily been explored that much Manibus is quite offensive and you got Shivel Talk with a newer Pokemon which is hard to define how viable or not it really is with a standard meta so Moltres as a potentially special offensive attacker would be a great addition to that type combination and the fast behind it however it's it is the fiery wrath it's synergy move that confuses me as it turns to be a dark type based move that has the chance to flinch you i reckon that dark pulse feels the same and it just i, I don't get that that said though i am i am all aboard this i'm really looking forward to see what Moltres brings to the meta it's quite frankly that type of combination, as I said, has to be redone, and I think Moltres could be the best of that, if anything. And now we come to the meat, I would say, of these um, updates, and that is actually the Reggies, both Reggie Drago and Reggie Electric. I don't believe I butchered that all too much, has two really interesting synergy moves. First and foremost, <laughs> Reggie Draco, um, it gets Dragon Energy, which is basically a water spout. Of dragon stab um, I can only assume that if they shift the stats somewhat that it's probably gonna be one of those Pokemon that as Regis tend to be either 150 250 or 50 in a stat I, I hope we have a 250 based 
dragon Pokemon with a lot of defenses that would be just annoying with no actual power behind it. But basically, yeah, I feel excited about that. I, I can't help it. Uh, when it comes to uh, Regielectric or Eriki, it's hard to say for me. I, I don't get it. You guys get to get the chance to, you know, tell me how dumb I am not solving it. But it learns Thunder Cage, which is basically an electric-based infestation. Um, that I don't know how great that will necessarily be, but I really hope that um, the um, Red Electric is going to be a good Pokemon anyway, because I think it has a lot of merits to be very viable, and, um, you know, people calling it Red Giddy or Spaghetti, so I'm, I'm going to call it the Red Spaghetti, because I think it's phenomenal. What a absolute insane hard name to say. And, you know, I really hope they show there, there is another Reggie here that they just don't show because I really want to see more. I love these concepts. So here is every Pokemon revealed so far from the old Pokemon. And, uh, you know, if you go to what I'm saying, it doesn't say which DLC it will be in, though we have a few ideas of where they have potential to be in as the DLC was shown. That said, I would really want to focus on a few things that I'm really excited about. First and foremost, Polyrath. We learn, we know through home that Polyrath learns both liquidation and close combat this generation. It's gonna be awesome, hands down. Then we have Executor. All the reason that exercise is because a lol and Executor, and it's a game axe. I just wanna see that Tangrow. Huge inclusion for um, them both the Smoke and OU meta, but also Draft Lee meta. Same with Stami, which is an incredible water psychic type. Great to have that guy back. Uh, and then we have Scissor. Scythe was revealed, so Scissor is to be included. Scissor without Hidden Power Fire to push it back could be one of the best Pokemon in the game because it's one of the massive steel types and definitely give Duran a run for its money. Um, Tauros, awesome. <laughs> Big fan of Tauros, hands down. Um, we also have Agron, which is a great Explode Relic Cant uh, Luxray. Um, which is a Pokemon that got boosted this generation through new moves in, uh, let's see, Play Roughs and Psychic Fang. So I think it also learns Agility, so it's a Guts Agility Pokemon, and uh, that's all you need to know. Uh, Crocodile got revealed, let's see, we have Emolga, which is kind of cool because I like Emolga myself. We have Yanchao, Buffalant, and Dragon, and Dragology then Formantis and Lurantis. So basically, from all the Pokemon shown, we know there are roughly 80 mods left to be showcased. So we're staying vigilant, hoping for the best. But that is basically it. Like, if you want to read more about DLC, I'm going to link Pokemon's channel down below. And if you have more discussion about this, feel free to, of course, comment down below what you are most excited about. And, uh, you know, we are moving towards actually an expanded universe in Generation 8. Who thought that was ever possible, consider how November was looking. I never thought we'd be excited about this, but I actually am. I've been missing a few of these Pokemon, and this is a great way to expand this um, this game, if anything. So with that, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care. And, you know, as always, bye.